I'm Patrick Gates, and I screwed up. A couple of years ago, I started to hear about this thing, modular synthesis, or or Euro rack. That was the weird one, because to me, that was a Behringer uh, mixer. I had no idea what that was. What I did know is some of my favorite musicians, uh, um, uh, Nine Inch, oh, yes, Cat, I'm talking. Meow. Yeah? I'm talking to the good people. Yeah? Am I taking too long? What I did know is some of my favorite musicians, um, Nine Inch Nails, Radiohead, um, the Chemical Brothers, were all using modular of different types in their music. And they were creating sounds that I had never heard before. So many different, really unique things, and that got me really interested in it. So I did a little Googling and I found a few people that were talking about this modular Eurorack thing. People like Andrew Huang and um, Simon the Magpie and Heinbach and uh, Look Mum No Computer. Look Mum No Computer was particularly inspiring to me because the fact that he made all this stuff by himself. So I started to look around at Eurorack and I thought, oh, well, maybe I can make myself a little rig, you know? I wonder how much that could possibly be. Expensive, really expensive. I mean, people were spending five to $10,000 on something this small, and it kind of went, okay, I, I don't have that. I have a little extra, but not that extra. And on top of that, I didn't have the skills that Look Mum No Computer had to invent and design his own things from, from scratch. Um, I thought maybe I could learn it, but it wasn't something that I really wanted to dig into, was you know, making my own circuits and those kind of things. But it, it was just it was just a really high barrier of entry, and I went, well, you know, maybe I just won't look into that right now. So I went to NAM at the beginning of this year, and I went to the Dopfer booth, and I started to mess around with this stuff, and I was like, this is awesome. I, I, I want this, I need this. I then found a, a group here in San Diego um, called Modular on the Spot, who was hosting these events that I could go to and learn about it, and watch other people play with it, and listen to the music that people creating just incredible cool stuff and I was like okay I want to do this but how so I found that these people were putting together PCBs pre-printed boards that I could follow the instructions along put the pieces where they belong and make a module from there and that would take a $300 module and make it $50 and I went oh okay so I thought, you know, naive me, that these things were through hole components. What that means is they're these larger components with leads, with legs that come off of them. And those get stuck into holes, and then you solder the other side of it, which is just melting metal, basically, onto the other side. I had a little bit of experience with soldering, not much. I knew the fundamental ideas. I'd done it a few times in supervised settings, but I didn't own a soldering iron myself, and I, I didn't really know quite what I was getting into. But I said, you know what? Anything I've ever wanted to learn, I figured out. So I took a big leap and I bought myself a good soldering station on a recommendation from my friend David, and then I went and bought five different PCBs. So my first one I decided to look at was the module tester. Now, like I mentioned before, those were through hole components, big, easy components. In fact, I'll show you, right? Yeah. All of these are big components, big components with big leads on the other side that I could solder down, easy peasy, snip the extra metal, the diff the extra lead metal hanging off there, and then boom, I had this. It was a good thing to learn on. I definitely made some mistakes, but with the help of David, um, the internet, and just a little bit of patience, I finished this guy and I put it together and it worked. Really validating. It made me go, okay, great, I can do this. So after this one, boom, let's move on to the next one. So this is it completed. This is the next one that I went on to do. It's called Lynx. The problem is it's tiny. Um, so none of them really are through hole components. The only through hole components on here are the LEDs and these jacks. So all the different little components behind here that actually make it do the thing it's supposed to do, those are what are called SMD components. It's surface mount device. They're these tiny little guys that attach to the surface of the PCB. There's little metal pads and you put it on there and you connect it to the metal pads basically. Well, I looked online, I was like, how do I do SMD soldering? I'm sure I can learn this. I looked online and people were taking their soldering iron and a little bit of solder and putting them on there. And I was like, oh great, I'm gonna do that, easy peasy. So I practiced with a throwaway PCB that I got and then I jumped into this guy and immediately screwed it up. Like immediately. <laughs> I tried to put one of these components onto the board and it was really close to a couple other components and when I put the solder down, I put too much on, that connected with one of the nearby pads which it wasn't supposed to be connected with. Then when I tried to take all that solder off, I pulled the pad off of it. Which isn't too big of a deal in through hole, but in SMD, that's, that's it. 
That one was toast. So this is the first SMD module of four that I purchased and I screwed it up that quickly. That was kind of heartbreaking. Um, soon after that, I, I, um, I stopped. I, I, I didn't touch them all for a few days. I, I was really distraught. It was this feeling like I just put a bunch of money um, into buying these things and they're just gonna sit as junk. I'm not gonna be able to complete this stuff because I'm just not, I'm not skilled enough. Um, and that was really hard. After a few days of just letting myself relax and not trying to worry about it, I looked online and I, I looked up SMD soldering again and I looked and said, what can I do to make it easier? And I found these guys that were talking about reflow. Instead of actually taking a bit of metal and melting it against the you know, component, you syringe on this paste onto the pads and then melt it either in an oven or with a hot air gun. So I talked to David um, and he said, yeah, that's a definitely a way to do it. Um, it's a little expensive and I went, well, Okay, so instead of letting all this other stuff go to waste, I took an even bigger leap and I purchased a hot air gun, some solder paste, and some really good tweezers and got to work. I can't say it wasn't nerve wracking, but I jumped in and I went for a little bigger module. I actually worked on Ripples first, which has more spaced out pads and I did it. I did it perfectly. I was so happy. So I went, great, let's move on. Uh, a couple days later, in one day, I knocked this guy out. In one day, I knocked this guy out. And since then, I've done two more. So backing up, backing up, backing up, we talked about Look Mom No Computer. Now Look Mom No Computer, a guy named Sam Battle does these really, really interesting DIY modular builds. He's made his own format, he's made his own everything. It's really interesting what he does. And I found out while I was doing these other PCBs, well, Sam, has his own module. It's this guy right here. It's a tube distortion for Eurorack. And I went, okay, that's cool. It doesn't have that many components. So I decided let's give it a shot. So I purchased his PCB and the bits for it. Started to work on it, started to work on it, and I screwed up again. I put one of the jacks on the opposite side and that that, it was done after that. There was no recovering it from there. I spent a long time trying to desolder that jack and, uh, and, and put it on the other way, but it wasn't happening. So there was another one in the trash. Um, you know, that wasn't, wasn't so bad, but it was still just another defeat and kind of went, this one's really simple. Why am I struggling so much with these? Now looking forward, if I had realized that I would accomplish three more in the next few weeks after that, I would have been, you know, so crazy happy. But in the moment, I had no idea. So I decided I would order a replacement PCB and jump in and make it. So let's make it. So I guess now it's time to make some music with it?
Thank you guys so much for watching this video. It's been a real pleasure putting this together. Um, I'm hoping to do a lot more stuff uh, about visuals and projects that I'm working on there, audio and songs and different musical projects that I'm working on, maybe even dance or, or physical art mediums, whatever I wanna work on. I, I wanna do this journey with you guys to help inspire you guys to wanna take on those projects and not give up when things get rough. So when these little failures come in, they can totally wipe your confidence. But if you can brush yourself off and get back in there, I think you'll be really impressed with what you can make. If you guys are interested in listening to the song, I'm probably gonna upload it to SoundCloud, maybe somewhere else. So leave it in the comment section if you can think of somewhere else where this would be great to have. As the holiday season comes up, I've got a project that's particularly holiday-y, and I'm really excited to put that out there for you guys to watch. So if you wouldn't mind, why don't you subscribe, click that bell, like this video if you enjoyed it, especially if you like the song, because I had a lot of fun putting that one together. And go out there, learn something new, make something with it, and share that with the world. And don't let it get you down if you screw up, because everyone screws up. And that's just part of the process. Thanks, bye!